Babs Hockey Academy with episode two, how to handle a tough team situation or a losing streak. Now, this is a little bit broad in the sense of like, what's a tough team situation sound like? It could be things aren't working out with your coach, you're not really getting the playing time you think you deserve, or you're having a tough time getting along with teammates, or you're just not clicking with your team. So these are just, it's gonna be a simpler, program from the last YouTube episode are going to give you two specific things you can do that help me get through my tough situations and help you navigate this and really get more consistent play out of you. So I'm going to talk about my situation where I went to Germany. I had a coach that didn't speak English. I had uh, most of the team couldn't speak a lot of English. He spoke a little bit. Um, only a couple North American guys on there um, in a country where it doesn't speak English. Again, the whole thing was just very, it was very different. A very different style of play, uh, bigger rank, the whole nine yards. So there was a lot going on and it was very difficult to perform. And so when our team start, our team did well, I was playing well in the preseason. Everything was good. Everyone was happy. But when things started to go downhill, we started losing, we weren't scoring, we went on a really, really long losing streak. That's when we really saw a lot of people's true colors. And it was just, you saw the pressures coming in from ownership. And it was just a very difficult situation to happen. Again, speaking with a lot of the other players, it was just, it was very difficult to come to the rink. And we didn't feel like, we didn't feel like, uh, it, it's, we didn't have that motivation, that drive. And that happens. It's completely normal. You're gonna go through that at one point or another in your career. And so what I found is, again, I went through the hard stuff. I'll tell you what to avoid, and that's what I did, which really made things worse. But then when I really worked on these two specific things, it helped me really fine tune my game and focus in on the things that matter. And so what typically, what we want to avoid is, again, like I said, we want to avoid adding more. Less is more in these situations. Our general tendency in hockey is to add more. If we're not winning, how do we, what else do we gotta do? Do we need to do more skill work? Do we need to skate more? Do we need to do more drills like this? Do we need to be on the ice longer? You name it, that's the general habit is how do we add more? And what I found is that this generally leads to worse performance. Um, you even see this from a coaching standpoint. When things aren't working, it's like throwing spaghetti on the wall and seeing what sticks. They're like, let's try this, try this, try this. And it's just chaotic. It generally, it does show results once in a blue moon, but over a long period of time, it's not the way to go. It really forces you outside of your, your focus. It focus, it pushes you outside of what makes you the player or the coach that you are. And so what I found is a player's working through these two things allowed me to narrow my focus on what matters and focus on each shift in play at a time. And so the first major thing I did, like I just mentioned, the first thing is narrow your focus. When you narrow your focus, you want to find one to two things that really make you the player that you are, or one to two things that you can improve on right away that you can focus in on to really elevate your performance. And so it can be anything. And so one player, I, again, I, worked, I did this recently with a couple players, and again, every in-season program, this happens to all the players that I work with, and this is what I found to work very well for them, but it's narrow your focus. And with this one player, he needed to work on his communication in the D zone. And I said, okay, when you don't have the puck, you're on the defensive side of the puck, we need to communicate more. It's very simple, nothing else. Don't worry about positions, don't worry about all that. Worry about the defensive communication when you're in the D zone. When you do that, you're gonna be able to break that puck out better. And then another player was, I need to get off the walls. He felt like he was very perimeter. I said, like, okay, just get off the walls. and. Don't worry about anything else, don't worry about moves, just worry about getting off those walls when you corral the puck, when you get to a loose puck, and let the rest work itself out, just go out and play. And you that's as simple as those two things, communicating the D zone and getting off the wall. And the rest takes care of itself. We Again, there's so much going on when things aren't going right. It seems like everything is in your face, whether it's like the media, whether it's social media, whether it's your teammates, your coaches, it seems like everyone is just all over you. So we just need to narrow that focus. When we do that, 
we're going to be able to fine tune our game and get back to the things that make you the player that you are. Now the second thing is we want to play shift by shift. It's very easy to get caught up in the past, what you did last shift, or worry about, am I gonna get another shift up here? Who am I playing with next? Worrying about the future. So we have these two um, mindsets that we keep trying to fight. And just like in the last podcast, um, last, uh, last episode, I mean, we talked about how when we we're thinking, when we're in the past, our mind's usually lagging. When we're thinking about the future, we're usually buzzing, we're a little too high, we're emotionally charged. And so these are two areas we want to avoid. Again, with that self-check, we'll be able to be aware of that. But again, we want to avoid and really find that sweet spot. And that starts by playing shift by shift. Regardless of what happened last shift, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about if the coach is going to, who he's going to put you out with or if he's going to put you out. Just worry about your next shift. It's one shift at a time, one play at a time. It's about building positive momentum in your favor. And so a good example of this is if you have ever uh, watched Ted Lasso, if you haven't, I recommend it. It's on Apple TV. He had a, uh, a player got dangled and he was just like pouting on the ground. Um, and so he brought him over and he said, hey, do you know what the happiest animal on the planet is? And the player was like, no. He goes, a goldfish. And he was like, why, why a goldfish? And he goes, it has a 10 second memory. And he said, go out there and be a goldfish. And he kind of didn't understand that concept, but that really, when you think about it, is an absolute gold mine. Because in those 10 seconds, that's all he needed to focus on. The rest in the past didn't matter. The future wasn't even crossing his mind. It's focused in on those 10 seconds. And that's where I'm trying to get you to focus in is shift by shift. Now, this is something I had to learn over time. Unfortunately, I couldn't, I didn't learn it until middle of my pro years. In college, again, one of the biggest struggles for me was overthinking. And I laugh at that because every player that knows me knows that's my general tendency. And it's, it really is a general tendency of most players is to overthink things or do more. I always wanted to do more. And so when things aren't going well, we automatically assume we need to add more but really it's more of addition by subtraction in this situation. When you got a tough situation, regardless if it's the coach or team, your own play, or your team's in a losing streak, we really want to do less. And so it starts with these two things. Narrow your focus, find one or two things that you can do better that you're really good at to focus in on next game. Second thing, we wanna go step by step, shift by shift, play by play. We don't want to think about the past or the future. Again, you will. It will happen. But don't worry. We want to go right back into the future. We want, I mean, the present. Don't worry about the future. We want to get into the moment. And when you do that with practice over time, you'll get good at this. It's not going to happen overnight. Let me tell you, I struggled through this. It takes some time to get good at. But I promise you, if you start working through it, use these two simple steps, I guarantee you'll be able to create more consistent performance and get out of that losing streak. So thanks again for tuning in to the second episode of the BAPS Hockey Academy, really helping you navigate these nuances and situations that happen in season. So a great resource that you now have to elevate your game and it's absolutely for free. And remember, I got a PDF that you can download below and it will be on my website that you can download on your own, have it forever and use to navigate these situations. So hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you enjoy the Babs Hockey Academy and continue to listen as I got more episodes to really take your game, take your IQ to the next level.